Appreciate everybody coming to our webinar today. Uh, what we're going to try to accomplish here is twofold. I see an amazing amount of our customers today, so I appreciate everybody jumping on. I also see a bunch of people that uh, we don't know. So twofold, one is to update you on the current products that your existing Shortel, now Mitel system, um, works with for a contact center, as well as Dave Wallace is going to show us and talk to us about where the industry is going and what's happening and some trends that are happening in the, uh, the contact center space. As you know, or may not know, um, you should know that Mitel bought Shortel, and with that, um, we got uh, access to a ton of their peripheral applications and devices that now work on the Mitel Shortel Connect platform. Um, I'm talking to you on the latest handset, the 6900 series handsets that now work, came from the old Mitel and now work on Shortel, so we're big fans of that. Um, but most importantly, um, our, our ECC, Enterprise Contact Center, which is the premise-based contact center that I've sold for the past, gosh, 15 years that works on the Shortel Connect product, um, never really kept up with APIs and and omni-channel and social integration and artificial intelligence and those types of things. So when Mitel bought Shortel and announced that all the peripherals will come over to our product, we couldn't have been more excited. And the product, the MICC, what we're going to be talking about today, is available today. Um, it's GA in about two weeks. Uh, we have it in our lab. We're working in it. We're playing with it. And so it does everything we were expecting it to. Um, the, the only caveat is the first release only goes up to 200 agents, and then later next year it'll go to uh, 2,000 plus agents. So we're real excited about where it's going, what's happening. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to David Wallace, who is uh, their Mitel's customer experience specialist, and he's going to talk about industry trends and show us the actual product. Hey, thank you, Matt. Much appreciated. And uh, audience out there at large, thank you for joining us. It certainly is a uh, Good to get together and talk to Matt and uh, Matt's uh, customer base. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of time and just kind of go through some of the things that are available on the new MICC system. But I do want to just quickly talk about uh, the celebrating the 45 years of Mitel. Uh, and we've had other acquisitions. I know Matt spoke of the uh, Shortel acquisition. But just to assure you, where we see gaps within the portfolio, we've We've gone out and we've made uh, acquired various other systems as well, systems and technologies as well. So I put this up here just to make sure that you understand uh, where we see gaps. We're going to go out and either organically uh, build those ourselves or go out and make an acquisition to make sure we fill those gaps and, and make sure that from a customer experience and a telephony standpoint as a whole, we, we make sure that we're ahead of the game and, and are ready for you as you move forward. Uh, talk a little bit about quickly about today's Mitel. I'm not going to go through all of these slides in great detail because I want to get to the demo, as Matt said. We've got an opportunity to kind of look at the product, so let's do that. But I do want to kind of key in on one thing here, and you'll see we're number two in contact centers shipped globally. Uh, I think that's key because I want to set the let you understand, uh, as Matt has said, we have a great understanding of contact centers and the portfolio and capabilities needed to actually have a great customer experience capability within your enterprise. Uh, I'm going to talk real briefly about the evolution of customer experience and where we see it going. And uh, I think one thing that's key as we move forward, experience is the product. Uh, and that's something that I don't just come up with anecdotally. There was a study done, a Walker study done, uh, and it basically stated by 2020, so we're a few short months away from this, Customer experience will overtake price and product as the key brand differentiator. And the fact of the matter is, with that smartphone and the ability to have all of this information that your customer base can get to, you have to provide them not only that you have to meet them where they want to be met, and you have to provide them with the information that they're looking at, looking for, for at their fingertips. Uh, today's customer is more intelligent, more social, more personal. And I assure you, they have much higher expectations of you than, than in the past. So, you know, we talk a little bit about that. And also another impact within the customer experience that's going on is digital transformation. And that's fundamentally changing the way that your customers are actually interacting with you. 
Uh, and so digital technology needs to connect everything. So the people, machines, information. And one thing that I want to emphasize, digital transformation is touching every function within your business. So as you're having discussions and talking with, with internally about where we're going from a, from a customer experience or a digital transformation, all of them are somewhat tied together and you need to make sure you're expanding who it is you speak to. Bring the whole organization in for this discussion because you're going to find everyone is going to need some type of customer experience or need to touch their customers or your customers in some way. And let's make that easy on them. Some trending that's going on uh, from a customer experience standpoint, uh, mobility. So obviously 5 million mobile, to mobile applications were available June of this year, um, you know, and many of us are taking advantage of those. Uh, omni-channel customer experience. So once again, you've heard me say it earlier in this presentation, you know, we need to meet the customers where they want to be met. 77% of the millennials uh, believe that it should be a very, varied channels and a variety of ways in which to interact with you. So once again, meet your customers where they want to be met. Uh, Internet of Things is actually changing how we do business. So I'll talk a little bit about that in this as well. Um, but once again, chatbots and artificial intelligence, analytics. There are businesses out there from a customer experience standpoint that need to take advantage of all of these things. I need to be able to analyze it and measure it. Otherwise, I can't fix it. Um, workflows and APIs. 60% of businesses are, are out there utilizing and, and need different reference materials and different workflows available for their agent community. And we'll talk about that a little bit about, a little bit. 50% uh, of the businesses out there are using three to six applications or tools for their agents that they have to swivel, uh, swivel to and pivot. Uh, what we're, you know, that is time, time spent looking for information, time spent looking for new screens. I actually was uh, interacting with a customer just last week that actually for their agent community had seven different screens that these agents had to go to. And we can actually help you with our API capability. We actually utilize REST APIs. So for those of you that are, um, are uh, web savvy or, or uh, uh, code savvy, you're probably well aware that REST API is a very simple tool that uh, from a web app application standpoint, that makes it very easy to integrate and pull information in. I actually have uh, contact center agents out there where I, I actually am bringing in from seven or eight different databases the information that they need at their fingertips. So you need to start thinking about that along those lines as well. A um, little something about understanding the internet of things. We've all probably seen it and you've seen on TV, we have commercials, your refrigerator's actually calling the repairman, for example. Uh, this is just kind of a connected device and we will be testing on this at the end of this session. But, uh, you know, some of the ideas and some of the ways that the Internet of Things are actually being used, right? So, you know, smart parking, I think golf courses, for example, for water levels and making sure that they are not wasting water and just watering areas that don't need to be watered. So there's a sensor there that actually triggers when that water needs to be turned on. Smart lighting, uh, for example, a lot of different applications. I'm not going to go through all of them. But it's something certainly that you want to be thinking of and think about how it can integrate and, and help move forward your business initiatives. Uh, now I'm going to go into understanding the MICC. So that's the My Contact Center. Um, it's a fully robust and fully capable uh, contact center solution, inbound, outbound, and self-service routing of all digital media. So I think that's key. So we're not doing, uh, oh, someone's got to get that email. We're going to have that email. We're going to have it coming in, uh, for example, whether it be an email, whether it be a phone call, whether it be a chat. And we're actually going to have a workflow attached to that to make sure that it's handled, not only to make sure that it's handled, but make sure it's handled in a way that, that you feel is going to best serve your customers. Um, unified agent desktop. So once again, we're looking for a single cockpit. So somewhere where we're not having to chair swivel and, and waste an agent's time by having to go and look for information or go to find additional screens. Um, web chat capabilities, reporting and monitoring. I think this is key because as I said earlier, if I can't report on, on it, if I can't monitor it, I can't fix it. So we give you a lot of tools and I'm gonna actually show you some of these tools and we'll actually go in and, and get an opportunity to look at them. Uh, once again, omni-channel 
routing of all multimedia. So I think that's key as we move forward. Once again, you'll hear me say it multiple times, meet the customers where they want to be met. Uh, one thing about an omni-channel, full support of omni-channel capabilities, whether it be voice, email, web chat, SMS, et cetera. Um, but once again, not only do we take in those, those, those capabilities, we also have the ability to pivot. So I can actually be on a voice call with a customer and mid-interaction mid say, well, Mr. Customer, I've got your email address. Let me go ahead and pivot, and I'll send you this information via email or text or you know any combination as you can see we have various combinations there in which you can pivot and it will all be remain a part of the same contact part of the same uh, interaction uh, so i think those things are keys as we move forward but web ignite is our web uh, web enabled agent user interface and that's what i'll be showing you in just a moment i feel i'd be remiss if i didn't talk a little bit about artificial intelligence uh, and the improvements that it's making within customer experience. I, I, I want to emphasize that artificial intelligence will be built into customer experience platforms as we continue to move forward. The question is, is not if you'll utilize artificial intelligence. The question is when you will use artificial intelligence. So I don't bring this up to say you have to go out and get it tomorrow, but just make sure that as you're moving forward with business plans and, and your roadmap, Make sure you're kind of thinking where and when this may be something that we'd like to implement within our organization. Uh, you know, making the case for bots. So 85% of the customers out there in the enterprise are managed without interacting with a human by 2020. So a lot of these self-service applications are going to be very much front and center as far as engaging your customers. Uh, agents typically use three, three screens to do their job. We use artificial intelligence along with analytics and those capabilities to actually uh, help that agent along to make sure that they're not doing that chair swivel that I was talking about a little earlier. 14% um, of an agent's time is spent looking for data and information. So we can have the AI assist in that based on what the conversation is. They can actually be pulling up in the background, the artificial intelligence can be pulling up relevant information that can be presented to the agent for them to easily present that and move it on to the customer. Um, one thing I've done here is a lot of times people go, well, we're not sure where artificial intelligence will fit. Um, so I've got a couple of use cases here that I put together. I want to be very clear, the use cases, whether it be healthcare, as you see here, and I'm not going to read these, I will make them available to you. Uh, once again, hospitality, that's an area where artificial intelligence is being utilized and we're seeing an uptick in capabilities there. Um, obviously higher education. So these are just three that I've kind of called out, but I think all organizations, anywhere you're touching customers, I think you're going to find that uh, there's a use for it or a use case for it. And it's kind of interesting as I sit down with organizations and we kind of come up with them together. It's, it's something that's really interesting and kind of kind of amazing to see the light go on and they start kind of going, hey, we can use this here, we can use it there. Uh, recognize this isn't something that's going to replace people. But uh, those that was all I had from a slide deck standpoint. I wanted to move through those fairly quickly because I think it was key to make sure we get to actually see the product and, and, and play with it. But hey, I think Dave, what I, Dave, yeah. Matt, Pingator, hey, can you, uh, you're kind of going in and out of volume, a little light and a little volume up and down. Can you speak closer to your speakerphone, Mike? Sure, sure. Yeah, sorry about that. Is that better? Yep. We'll see. All right. Thanks. All right, not a problem. But uh, I think this is kind of a, a, a Charles Darwin. It's not the strongest species that survives, nor the most intelligence. It's the one that's most adaptable to change. And right now, from a customer experience standpoint, we're seeing a sea change in how people are actually engaging their customers. And it's it's going to touch every organization and every business. No one will be left out, this I guarantee. Uh, and that concludes the slide portion of, of this session. Uh, Matt, anything else before I go ahead and jump into an actual uh, showing of the product? No, I think you've done a good job setting the stage where things are going and what's happening. And let's uh, show these people, show everybody what, uh, what it looks like. All right, fantastic. All right, guys, now what I've done here is I've pulled up, this is any website USA, right? So this is our Wicked Ticks. We have a demonstration system. 
And so we put this up there. One of the main things is that I want to point out, as you can see this little pop in here, where we have the ability to kind of let our customers know where they can contact us and how they can contact us. Now, obviously, if you didn't have SMS, for example, that wouldn't be here as an option. But one of the things I do want to point out here, and as part of this, one of the things that we're able to do, we can give an estimated wait time as far as the media that they may choose. Now, to point out, some customers want to drive, some customers want to drive their customers to, for example, less expensive media in which they can use. So, for example, I may want to subtly uh, get you to use an email, for example. So we give the ability to kind of fudge this number. So if, if I wanted to have that at two minutes and make this 25 seconds, as you can see here, maybe someone would look at that and go, maybe I'll just send an email, for example. So we give you the ability to do that. Some take advantage of it, some do not. Um, but once again, I have full media capability here, uh, and I also have a chat capability. We're gonna come back to that, but I actually have web chat enabled on this, this site as well. Realize this is a pop-in, so you would basically, it would, you would go to your website, and this would be something that your web developer, or you would just pop into your, your existing site. Not a, not a big lift for that. Okay, now I'm in Chrome right now on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and go into Firefox which is where I have my agent. I'm gonna just, real quickly, I had already kind of set up some things and was playing with this a little bit earlier, but this is our Web Ignite cockpit. So this is where all agent interactions are going to take place. I'm not going to be pivoting to other screens based on media that comes in. As you can see here, I'm gonna start up here, but I have the ability, this is something that I think is kind of nice, it's feedback. So we, as a company, are taking feedback directly from you and your agents to ensure that we update and upgrade this product uh, as the customer base needs. And I think that's key. That comes directly into our PLM folks. That's something kind of new. Um, and I, I really kind of appreciate it and like it. I also have the ability for contacts here. Um, so as you can see, I can have all of my contacts, whether it be employees, uh, whether they be queues, uh, or the Active Directory, for example. So I have all of my contacts at my fingertips. I have the ability to make a phone call, of course. Um, as you see here, this is where I make myself available. So a couple of things I'll point out uh, as I make myself available. So as you can see, I'm currently available right now. If I needed to step away, I have busy codes and reason codes in which I can go to. So maybe I'm just going into after call work, or maybe I, it's inventory day, and I need to step away. So these are these are configurable. So these are all the reason codes that I may that I may use. For example, manager coaching, uh, and once again, these are configurable. I also have agent groups here. So one of the things you'll notice is that I'm an agent within Fair Specialist, and you can see all of these are lit up blue. Um, but if I noticed as a senior agent, for example, that the comedy is being inundated with calls and my and my call volume is down, I can actually go in here, for example, and say, gee, I'm gonna help Comedy out and go ahead and start taking calls from Comedy. These are configured uh, beforehand, but also realize as a supervisor, now this is what I have available to me as an agent. As a supervisor, all of these things are available and I'll kind of show you that as well. Um, but it's easy for me to get in. Normally when I get in, it's going to be just this queue here but I do have the ability to be pulled in or, or put myself into other queues based on volume as needed. Um, as I go across here, you'll notice I have some capabilities. I can take one phone call. This kind of lets me know how many of these I can take. I can take one web chat or two web chat interactions. I can handle two emails or I can handle one SMS. So once again, I also have an open media location here. This kind of what looks I kind of look, think of it as a pitchfork, but it's for open media. So I, I, I want to emphasize that because we don't know two years down the road what new media may become available. Uh, recognize this is a platform that is already prepared for what may be down the road. Because if I had told you five years ago you needed to be prepared to handle SMS messages into your contact center, you probably looked at me and said, for, you know, for what? So once again, this is a platform that's going to be a platform that you'll be able to utilize for the future. And we're actually making taking steps and making sure that we have areas available where we can quickly and easily pull in new media should that be needed. 
I'm going to go down here and talk a little bit about the queues. So not only do I have my inbox here, and you'll see that go live as soon as I launch a call, but I also, as an agent, have the ability to look at the queues. So as you can see down here, I have the appointment queue, fair specialist queue. I have all of these queues. And so I can, as an agent, go and look and see the activity that's going on within the contact center. One thing I'll point out, since I'm in a demo unit, I don't have a lot of calls coming in. A lot of it is simulated. But one of the things you'll see here, we have three people currently logged into the appointments reminder queue, and we have no calls coming into the appointments reminder queue. So I, if I can actually have this as a trigger, so that, that's, let's say, if we had five calls in there, I have the ability to make that go red because I only want to have four calls stacking before I have some visual alert to it. So I get a lot of information here from a queue standpoint as well. Um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and launch a call and you're going to see my screen change. Uh, I'm going to let you kind of hear it because you'll hear the auto attendant and so forth. And then I'm going to actually kind of turn it down so that I can talk through it. But let me go ahead and I'm going to launch a call into Wicked Ticks. You'll notice it recognizes me. With an X dot com. Based on the phone number you're calling from, we see you've shopped with us before. If you wish to continue with this account, press one. If you wish to proceed with a different account, let me go ahead. Them. They know my account. I'm going to go ahead and, for the interest of time, go ahead and launch into. Uh, go ahead and, and get it to the get it into the queue. Okay, and as you can see now, this call is coming in. I'm going to kind of point out a few things to you, get this away from me so we don't have so much static there. But um, a couple of things that you'll notice. I can see the queue that it came into. Um, I can see who the name of the individual is. I can see the time and date that it came in. Uh, I got a lot of information as I go down here. I want to also point out if I go a little bit further down, supplemental details. I can, I can see that there's the Annie digits that came in on this, the Dennis digits. I point that out because I have the ability to pull reports based on any of these, uh, any of this information as needed. Um, one thing that I do also want to point out, you'll notice that it's been assigned a case ID as well as an interaction ID. So once that's assigned in the system, this needs to be taken all the way to the very end. So this is a situation where we need to be able to finish this interaction and make sure that it's uh, taken care of in, in, a, in a good fashion, right? Make sure we're, we're getting our KPIs met. Okay, now one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to point out up here, I have some of the tools that are part of this. I have a hold button. I have obviously the ability to hang up. I, I have a dial pad. If I need to transfer this to another agent or another group, I can do so. I have the ability to invite, whether it be a supervisor or another agent, maybe a specialist. I have the ability to invite additional people into this call as well. I can also apply an account code. So I'm going to hit one of these. And what that does is it lets you as an organization know what type of call this is. So these are some of the things that we can have triggered for account codes. I don't know if everybody's familiar with it, but it allows you, for example, to say, um, this was a new sale. So a lot of times people will want to pull reports on all of the new sales that are taking place. This allows you to apply this code. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new sale, as you can see here. That's going to be attached to this record. So there are multiple ways I can pull and filter from a reporting standpoint, but I can pull it via account codes because maybe I just want to see how many new sales calls came in uh, or various other things that I may want to trigger. So that account code is now a part of this record. I can actually resolve this as a case. So once again, this is a, a case ID. I can resolve it once it's been taken care of. I can flag this for follow-up. Now, I think this is key because maybe I'm interacting with a customer and I need to actually deal with something tomorrow, but guess what? I'm on paid time off tomorrow. So I'm on vacation tomorrow, won't be able to handle this. One of the things I can do is I can flag this for follow-up. And if I, if I hit that, one of the things you'll notice, it gives me a couple of different options here. If this customer might say, call me back in five minutes, I can do so an hour tomorrow, for example, at the same time, or I can do a custom time if needed. Now, one of the things it allows me to do is I can say, you know what, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. 
but I know Kim will be, and she's part of my team. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna flag this for Kim. Uh, I'm gonna have this call, she's gonna have this pop into her queue tomorrow at 1227 for follow-up. If I hit okay, this is gonna pop into her box tomorrow while I'm out and away. I'll already have notes. I can either just rely on the notes that I put on this case, or I can actually, probably what I would do is proactively call her and say, hey Kim, tomorrow afternoon you're gonna have one of my, you know, a call's gonna pop in, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be Matt and you know, you'll wanna deal with him in this way. So I think that's something that's actually very key. Once again, when something comes into the organization, we want to make sure it's handled appropriately. I also have the ability to request for help. So as you can see here, if I hit that, that's going to raise my hand. It's going to alert my supervisor or a series of people that I want to make sure get alerted when I'm having issues, right? So I would go ahead and hit that. And now I'm, that's basically me saying as an agent, I'm on something that I can't handle. I need help. One of the things I want to point out over here is that if I had additional calls or interactions, they would all stack up here. So I'd know exactly what it was. So for example, if I had an email here or an SMS, whatever it may be, it would all stack up in my tray here. And once again, I get a lot of information just on a call. Now I'm going to go ahead and hang up this call because we're going to assume that it's been taken care of. One of the things you're going to notice is that I'm going to be given 10 seconds before I'm placed back in a ready state. So we give you, it's a built-in after call work. It is configurable because for example, you might have your normal agents uh, handling calls. They only need 10 seconds. You might have your uh, engineering support group, for example, that after a call, they may need 10 minutes, 20 minutes because there's actually some real work going on after, after call work. Um, so as I go ahead and hang up on this call, you're going to notice over here that I have work time. So it's going to give me 10 seconds before it actually clears and allows me to take a call. Once again, that is configurable. So now I'm in a, back in a ready state. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, for example, I'm going to launch a uh, email. And you're, one thing you're going to notice is that, once again, my cockpit here isn't changing even though now I'm taking in an email. So I'm gonna just send a test. Send a test email in. It's gonna take a few seconds, obviously email's gonna to have to route. But I never change, I don't go to a different screen based on anything. It's all going to come into this singular cockpit, all for handling. Emails are routing slow today, folks. Probably should have SMS you. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see now, this email is coming in very similar to what I have uh, for anything else, right? So it comes into the cockpit. I haven't gone to a different screen. As you can see, this email is now in my tray ready for me to take. You can see that I've had it and accepted it for 17 seconds at this point. And I can go back and say, thanks. For example, now I can just send that back and forth. Now, one of the things you can't see on my side is that when this email was sent, I went ahead and proactively sent out something and said, thank you for reaching out to us. We'll, we'll contact you within 24 hours. That or whatever uh, KPI you've set for emails, we could send it back and say the same thing. You know, thank you for reaching out to us. Um, we'll, we'll reach out to you within the next four hours. I think 24 hours in today's environments is a bit long. I'm a little disappointed if someone doesn't get back to me before that. But once again, this is configurable based on your customer base and needs. As you can see, I have all of these tools back up here again. It's changed a little bit, right, based on the fact that I have an email. But I still have the ability to send. I can put it on hold, of course. Uh, sometimes email is junk, so I can either no reply or I can mark it as junk to make sure it doesn't continue to come through. I still have the ability to transfer this. Even though it's an email, I still want to put in a, a, an account code on it. Uh, as you can see, it's a sales contact. So I want to put that on there, make sure that if we want to filter and pull emails that are sales contacts, that's something that I can do. Uh, once again, I can resolve this as a case, or I can yet again flag it for follow-up because maybe there's some additional information that I need to get for this customer, and maybe I won't be able to get that right away. So I can once again flag it for follow-up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and send this back out 
And now you'll notice I'm back ready. I didn't have a, because we assume on an email, you've probably taken care of it. We can probably, we can probably go ahead and put you back in a ready state uh, immediately. Once again, ready state is configurable, but as you see, I didn't have that 10 second delay on an email. Um, the last interaction that I wanna go through, and then there's some other things from a dashboard and a supervisor standpoint, I'd like to show you, but from a last interaction standpoint, I just wanna talk a little bit about um, chat. And I'm gonna do a very basic artificial intelligence chat here. It's gonna be handled half by me, half by the artificial intelligence, and half it will, it will transfer to an agent because I'm gonna take it to a point where we've said, this needs to be handled by a human being. So AI can't help here. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this. Uh, let me do it again here. Let me see in this chat. and close the window sorry about that folks i was playing with it earlier let me go ahead and make sure we're ready to go here okay so if i go here i go ahead and i have phone number i have email i have the sms capability here i'm going to go ahead and do a live chat so i'm going to say it's david customer uh, I'll put in a real email address. Should put the L. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start a live chat. As you can see, very simple, very easily. The system's going to come back and let me know that I'm dealing with a bot because we don't want to want to make sure that we're letting them know who they're dealing with. How can I help? I'm going to say basketball. Basketball in Los Angeles. So this is something everybody can kind of relate to, right? So I'm going to say I'd like to, uh, over the next 14 days, it went out and did a search. It went to Ticketmaster. Now recognize this would be going to your database and your, your knowledge base. So it's not doing just a general Google search, for example. Um, so we're actually, for this demonstration session, we've we're, we're going to Ticketmaster. It's telling me this is the game that I've chosen. It's gonna be in the Staples Center on this date. And I'm gonna say, you know what? What are the best seats? So it recognizes what I'm asking and it pulls up a seating chart. So now let's say that I've gone ahead, I've chosen a seat, I've blown this up, I've taken a look at it, I've chosen a seat. And I'm gonna say, uh, buy tickets. So now we're getting to a situation where the system's going to say, you know what, we're going to transfer you to an agent to buy a ticket. So I'm going to go back over here to my Firefox, because remember, I had had them on different systems or on different browsers. As you can see, now this, uh, this is incoming now, and I'm going to go ahead and accept this chat. A couple of things I want to point out to you as I accept this chat. As you can see, once again, I'm in the same cockpit that I've stayed in the whole time. I haven't changed only the screen and, and what's being offered to me has changed a little bit. But I can see from start to finish uh, exactly what's going on here and exactly what the interaction was. Uh, I can see that they've cho chosen the best seats. Uh, and I've, I've now actually accepted this as the agent. So one thing you'll notice, I had pulled it in, I got a chance to look at it, and then I accepted it. So even though I took it into my, into my user interface, I still had not accepted it. And a lot of times customers are asking, they're like, well, does the agent have a quick second to kind of look at it, look it over, find out what it's about? The answer is yes, I can accept it. Then I have to click again to actually bring me into the, to the customer. And once again, that gives you a few seconds to overlook the interaction, kind of get your thoughts together and before you actually interact with the customer. So a couple of things I'll point out here. I can now go back and forth with this customer. I know that they are looking to buy a ticket. I know what seats that they've chosen. A couple of things that have happened here, though, as you can see, the artificial intelligence has auto-suggested some things, some documents for me. A couple of things I'll point out. Um, this game is taking place at the Staples Center. So that's probably something I would definitely want to provide the customer. So as I'm selling these tickets, I would say, well, by the way, Mr. Customer, are you familiar with with parking and you're familiar with the restaurants in the area. You know, that's a, once again, a value add. We wanna give them great customer experience. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, well, let me go ahead and forward you this information on the Staples Center, and that way it can help you from a parking, and if you want to get a bite to eat, um, this will have all of that information within it. So I'm going to go ahead and load that in there. Uh, now that's available, as you can see, that document has been made available to the agent or to the customer. I'm going to go back over on the customer side. As you can see, now that's something I can print, and I would have finished my transaction at that point. Um, now I can go back over here. I'll go ahead and I once again I can apply a code. I'm going to say this is a sales contact, and this in this uh, I'll just say it's Wicked Ticks Comedy. So if I'm selling comedy tickets, I can actually pull on that event or on that show, or for example, on that uh, advertisement or that uh, that website that we're, we're now advertising on. So I can actually filter this information very easily, very quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and end this session. And once again, now I'm back and ready to take additional interactions. Once again, all interactions are gonna be handled within this cockpit and within this one single view, this one pane. Uh, another thing I want to point out to you is we also have dashboard capabilities within the system. So sometimes now this is a supervisor dashboard. As you can see, I get all of the different cues here. Um, I get uh, what is my KPIs, what's the longest wait, uh, longest idle, how many are required, how many agents are required. Get a lot of information off of this particular dashboard. I also have information available and mine is fairly busy. Normally, you would this is customizable. So sometimes you might have one or two. You may not have three of these views. But in the interest of the demonstration, I just wanted to show you a lot of the different views. But I can see the agent state. And I also have as a supervisor control over these agents. But this is an employee state. So this is just a different way to look at it. But once again, if I, um, excuse me, if I go ahead and click on Luann, as you can see as a supervisor, I now, her agent state comes up to me. If I need to make Luann busy as a supervisor, I simply go in here and just say, you know what, we need some manager coaching. I'm going to go ahead and pull Luann out of the queue because maybe I see or hear some things that I want to work on her with. So I actually have the ability to go in and change her accounts, her account, or her account status, available status right from here. I also have her, her agent group status as well. So I, as a supervisor, can certainly go in and say, you know what, I want her to join all because we're getting a little getting a little hammered in our appointments reminder queue. So I have a lot of capabilities and have a lot of control over what Luann is doing and how she's actually interacting. Um, we also have additional supervisor or additional dashboards available. Uh, one thing I want to show you here, this is something that you may actually have on a wall board, for example. So this is widget based. So once again, anything that you need to pop in here or anything that you need to uh, measure, we can certainly have that within these within this system. So this is something that you build uh, very simply and very easily and you bring in and choose the attributes you want. I've actually seen it where half of it may be contact center. So for example, the SLAs and half of it may be a couple of tiles here, maybe shipping and what's going out. So once again, you can mix and match this. Uh, this is something that would be configurable and available on a wall board, for example, if you choose. So we give you a few different ways to actually have a, a, a dashboards within the system. Now, one thing I do want to realize, not everyone would have the ability to interact and change these, uh, these agents and move them around, for example, change their agent state. Um, so I have supervisor credentials. So this is all going to be based on class of service. So since I'm a senior supervisor, I have the ability to see all of these people. Maybe if I was a supervisor and I only had five or six people on my team, maybe the only people I could see would be the five or six that are on my team. So it's based on class of service and your level of expertise or seniority. Um, also, I wanted to point out here, we have some capabilities within the system. Kind of think of it as kind of a, uh, a CRM light. Most of the time in, in advanced contact centers, you're going to be either dialed in and hooked to integrated uh, via an API with Salesforce or Oracle, maybe various other things. As I told you, I've had uh, seven or eight databases in which we've had to pop information. But I say this because within this system itself, we have what I'll call a CRM light. Because as you saw, 
I gave it an interaction ID and a case ID. So you can actually utilize this as a CRM light. Uh, for example, as I go into here, one of the things you'll notice, these are all of the cases that have come into me as, a, as an agent. So for example, we have some in here that are waiting for a customer. As you can see, that interaction ID is there. Um, so I can have, you know, pending, I can actually have the ability, for example, I can take this one and resolve it. I'm going to go ahead and hit resolve because I know it's because I know it's something that I did. It was the, the call that we just made earlier. So I can actually say I want to resolve this case. So all cases within our system, if you're utilizing it in this way, have to be resolved before they're actually ended. So once again, one of the keys is if it comes in and it's handled, it needs to be resolved. There's nothing that there's no loose ends. You're not going to find emails or SMSs. It's like, oh, oh shoot, we didn't get a chance to get to it. We're gonna make sure that everything is gotten to, everything is handled, and everything is reported upon. Um, and so these are some of the capabilities from a user interface and from a supervisor user interface that we can take advantage of within the system. Um, we're getting low on time, so one of the things I wanted to do before we got, got too low on time, because I wanna have some time for Q&A, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, reporting and reporting capabilities, because I think uh, reports are something that are key. Analytic and information that you have within the customer uh, customer experience center or the contact center, um, I think you have to have a lot of reporting capability. Now, the system comes inherent with over 450 reports that are available within it. Um, so, you know, there's not only the 450 reports, and I kind of, as I pop this up, one thing you'll notice, I can report on voice, email, uh, specific media if I choose, SMS. But I wanna point out down here, this is a flexible reporting. So from all of the 450 headers we have within the system, I have the ability to slice and dice and say, you know what, I want this header on this report and I can take all 450 of those from different areas and put them into one report. So I have a flexible reporting tool. A Couple of things I wanna point out is that all of these reports can be delivered. Uh, and generated on, an, on a continuous basis. So for example, the reports I need every Monday morning, those are gonna be just delivered and collated for me and be in my inbox every Monday morning. So it can be scheduled. Um, one of the things I did wanna point out to you, for example, is I go to agent reports. As I click on that and it goes to the report type, I just wanna blow this up a little bit and show you all of the attributes that you have the ability to report on from an, just an agent report alone. And all of these, as I click on them, have the ability to drill down much further. So if I'm going to an extension report, whatever it may be, I have these reports available. And I, as I said, I can, through flexible reporting, I can mix and match all of these headers. So for example, I would just simply choose a report. Let's say I'm gonna select all, I'm gonna do agent answering by agent group. I'll select all of the agents. I've already got some reports built, but I just wanted to kind of show you how simple and easy this is. Once again, I would put in the, the dates that I wanted. I would put in the time, whether I wanted to start at 24 hour cycle or what have you. What intervals do I want this report to be showing? Do I want it to be 15, 30 or 60 minute intervals? I choose the days of the week that I'm going to pull it on. Uh, is this going to be default setting or over midnight? Uh, you know, the language I choose. I can choose how it is exported. So I think that's key because not only is it in Excel, I also have the ability to export it in a PDF. So I may not always be using these internally. I may have some of my partners, some agents or some vendors that I need to send some reports to. So I would simply put it in a PDF as an output. And then I would simply go down here, hit submit, and it would start building that report. As I said, it takes some time in the background to actually do that build. So I've gone ahead, and some of the more common reports, I've gone ahead and kind of already um, uh, already printed up. But for example, this is an agent group performance report. Uh, this is something that's a chart, uh, very colorful. As you see, I'll kind of pick on senior executives a little bit here. But uh, a lot of senior executives don't want to look at the static reports that a call center supervisor may want to look at. Very simply and easily pick out things that are relevant to them. Um, this would be something you would certainly use in staff meetings and so forth, so it's not so static. Something you can pick out very easily and quickly. Um, so we have an agent group performance, so this is chart-based. I'm going to go ahead 
and pull up a life cycle report. So this is a life cycle report for Tony Poor. As you can see, it's an old one. I should probably run a newer one. But uh, it's a life cycle report. This is one call. So if I needed, for example, to see what Tony was doing on this day, this is an example of one call that came into the system. As you can see, it was in the queue for eight seconds, was ringing for seven seconds, so on and so forth. I get very granular. If there's a recording attached to this, guess what? Within this report, uh, I can just hit, actually hit this and it will take me the, to the recording of this call. So very simply, very easily getting very granular information in, in a very quick fashion. Last one I'll show you is kind of a Q performance report, a little bit more static. Uh, as I said, I, I, it, it, this is all simulated uh, data, but as you can see, how many calls came in, how many ACV calls handled, number of long abandons. So we actually track abandoned calls so that if you want to be proactive and go back after them. So we're reporting on, a tra on, on abandoned calls after they're in the queue for eight seconds, because we assume if it's eight seconds or less, that's someone that's just a, a uh, bad phone number. They've made a bad call. They probably hang up. If I'm waiting 30 seconds, that means I was waiting and didn't get attended to. I may want to be able to pull those up and say, hey, Mr. Customer, I saw you. You called us a little while ago. Sorry we weren't able to get to you. Can I help you? Once again, that's supreme customer experience. And that's where uh, the systems and that's where people are going. We want to be personalized. We want to know what's going on. We want to know you. Know me know what I'm looking for, um, and handle me appropriately. Um, let me see. We've only got about 10 minutes left. I don't want to go too much longer. But once again, outbound dialing capabilities. So uh, if you need to have outbound dialing, and think about outbound dialing, that, that's all available within this system. But it's not always the agents that are outbound dialing. Think about accounts payable. Think about other organizations uh, other groups within your organization that need these types of tools. And certainly Matt and I can get together with, with his folks and would love to sit down with you and have an opportunity to kind of go more in depth. I want to be very clear, I could go on uh, two or three hours talking about this, this, this subject here. One last thing I do want to um, point out to you, documentation. In the past, I would always go into locations and they would have almost a closet room that had been turned into a documentation room, so to speak. You'd have these huge binders that everybody had to go and access when they needed to do something or had a question. One of the things we do is that we've enabled this on the web so that, for example, user guides, they can just be pulled up. You don't have to have them stored in some room. Uh, contact center reports guides. I've told you there are a lot of reports available. You can pull this up and make sure that we have what's what you're looking for and so on and so forth. So we give you a lot of information here um, that's at your fingertips um, that, that you can access and uh, hopefully it shortens the time frame in which you're looking for things. Um, I, I know I went very, very quickly, folks. <laughs> it was a lot. As I said, normally these are these are very long demonstrations, but I love the opportunity to get, get, get together with you, Matt, and team and, and, and go into it in a little bit more depth. But uh, Matt, that's about all I had at this point. I think that's about all time allows. Yeah, um, there were a couple questions, Dave. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if you can see them online. I can read them to you. Yeah, uh, hold on. Let me take a look here. And while you're looking at that, I just want to um, also re reiterate Mitel's commitment to keep your existing product alive and well with future R&D as evidenced by the MICC, the product that you have here being ported over to the Connect uh, premise product that you guys use today. So um, there is no charge for the upgrade other than labor. So all the software ports over. Um, it is a fresh install, so there would be labor charges. If you add features that you don't have, like the ECC, the web chat, omnichannel, things like that, there could be a charge for that. Um, and if we're investigating at this at the same time, if you're going to, you know, change out to the MICC, you know, we offer um, consulting to get you to cloud services. And so we can um, help you make the decision. Do we stay on prem with the MICC upgrade or do we put you into the cloud with an entirely with a Mitel solution or a entirely different solution? So um, love to get involved with uh, anybody who uh, requests that and we can help you with that. Dave, did you see him? Kind of. It's kind of tough for me to see him. I saw 
And yeah, it says here. my company collects multiple data points for each interaction. For each ticket, we document the reason for the interaction, the state, the callers from, which product they're calling about, etc. Is it possible to assign more than one code to an interaction? Yes, yes, you can. However many awesome. codes you need to put on there. So yes, that's not an issue. Are you able to make it a requirement for agents to assign a call type before they resolve? As far so as basically, an account code? Yeah. yeah, basically a mandatory account code. Yeah, we can make that man. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, there's some other ones on here that I'm going to follow up directly with uh, each individual because they're more upgrade type questions. Um, okay. All right. Any things else you want to close up with, Dave? Um, no, I thank you all for your time. Certainly do appreciate it. And I'm hoping certainly that uh, I can get out with Matt's team and, uh, and get a chance to meet some of you folks. Um, yep. and as I said, we are committed to moving forward with the, the ECC and making sure that you have a path to add additional capabilities. And, uh, that's something that my team helps with. So, uh, as yep. I said, looking forward to seeing And we'd love to, uh, meet people individually and talk about individual use cases. So reach out to myself or to your sales rep or to client services, and we can uh, take it, take the next step. Dave, appreciate it. Appreciate your time. All right. No, thank you. Thanks everybody. Okay. Bye all. Bye.